there at Fink. We're on the method stand. Let's check out the Ranger Raptor that's going to compete in this year's Fink. This one just won the Baja 1000 in its class. So let's check this thing out. Walk around, see what the differences are between the stock ones that we have and what they've done to the race one. All right, so we're here with Brendan from Ford. He's going to give us a quick walk around of the Ranger Raptor that just competed in the Baja 1000. And now it's going to be comp competing in Fink. No worries, so probably start at the front of the vehicle. I reckon it's the, uh, the most obvious in terms of exterior modifications. So um, in order to gain a bit more ground clearance and, and obviously protect the, the front and underbody of the truck, um, we've added, I guess, starts at a steel um, reinforcing bumper, uh, which is tied back into the chassis rail. And this um, quarter inch, six mil aluminium plate uh, runs effectively the length to the back of the transfer case. So when you're right sliding over rocks and, and dealing with the, the mixed terrain that you've got in Baja, it's just giving that extra level of protection just to make sure you don't damage any of the, the engine components. So but yeah, the next obvious modification is just the snorkel. Um, in Baja in particular, you have silt beds, which I guess you'd probably call them bull dust here, or it's pretty much like driving through talcum powder almost. And um, the first time we, we tested the truck, we didn't have the snorkel fitted and um, we were only able to do limited passes through the silt beds. So we decided to fit the snorkel, which is a, I guess it's a pre-production unit um, with the inlet face and backwards for, for dust purposes and, and silt ingestion. Um, and once we fitted that, we were able to do, I think it was 30 passes through the silt and, and didn't block a filter. So um, the engine being turbocharged and the size of the turbocharger, we're quite sensitive to any kind of blockage in the intake system. So making sure that that's um, monitored and, and, uh, and understood and it's read out in terms of, I guess, pressure drop across the filter. Um, just to protect the turbos as, as much as we can. So, All right, so I guess the obvious one, and, and again, it's a safety item. So um, it's a full T2 level design cage, um, which is FIA certified uh, through Motorsport Australia. So keep the guys nice and safe when they're competing. Um, they've got full containment race tech seats. So very same design you'd see in V8 supercar, effectively, what we've done is by the regs, we had to fit a fuel cell, which is in the tray. Um, so we moved the center position. In order to power the fuel system, uh, we've effectively integrated a MoTeC PDM and a MoTeC display and uh, a driver and nav display to then power, I guess, the ancillaries on the truck that aren't standard. So the lights, um, the horn or the siren, um, yeah, the, the nav system, the radios, pretty much anything that requires power, we're using the MoTeC PDM to control, and uh, and that integrates, I guess, into the, the truck architecture. So when the driver gets in and hits the start button, it's no different than him getting into a standard truck. There's no warnings. He doesn't have to do anything different to what he would normally do. So it's, it, the goal from, I guess, the interior side was that the driver getting into this versus the driver getting into a stock Raptor would, would have the same experience. So they're not having to okay chimes and warnings and issues, so yeah. So as we spoke about before, the fuel cell we fitted, uh, it's a 160 litre cell which is bed mounted. So there's a, a hole cut in the floor of the bed and then the cell is mounted to the chassis rail. So we reinforced uh, the, the rails and then mounted that solid. Um, to make sure that it was at the strong, attached to the strongest part of the car. For Baja, we ran a remote like dry brake filling system, so we could do hot stops like we would, like a, you know, a V8 supercar would, I guess. Um, whereas this race, we don't have a fueling requirement because we've got the capacity and the distance just isn't there. So we just have a simple fill system for Fink. Um, yeah, and in addition. We have two bed mounted spares, uh, we have a fire extinguisher, uh, we also have in behind the tailgate we have a reinforcing structure just in case the hinges happen to fail, doubt they will but just in case it's sort of double closure system. So talking about the safety cage, um, so we have a double hoop design so we have a main hoop which is over the driver's head and we have a secondary hoop which is at the back of the cab. Um, coming off the secondary hoop, we have a brace bar that runs to the back um, rearmost section of the chassis rail uh, or bolts down through the chassis rail. So just gives us a little bit more confidence in, um, in the frame and obviously from a safety perspective as well, it just ties the whole truck together and that goes through a Perspex rear window. So the, 
the whole rear section, the tub and everything can be bolted or it can be unbolted and uh, and replaced in the event of an accident or a, a rear ending. So at Baja, we actually ended up with a trophy truck firmly planted in our uh, in our rear and it had bent the whole rear like bumper structure and, and rear bar flat. So um, yeah, it was definitely a necessity when, when racing with other vehicles, other classes around you. Oh, you can barely see, but we've basically got the exhaust tip here, which is not the same as what you would see on your production truck. So um, from fitting the fuel cell, we've removed the mid muffler, removed the, the bimodal exhaust valves, um, and effectively we've put straight pipes, uh, a balance pipe just in case one gets crushed and blocked, but a straight tail pipe that's been raised up as high as we can. Again, like the front for departure angle uh, across the ground. So just to make sure we're as, as good as we can be. So yeah, straight through system. Um, we did some level of compensation in terms of back pressure just because you've lost that muffler but but in general yeah it's it's pretty pretty robust in terms of engine control. And obviously it's hard to see from here but the Fox live valve dampers that we have on the stock truck have been retained. Um, what we have done is is Fox have basically built a set of those dampers with adjustable seats. So when we've added all the safety items, the tires and everything to bring this up to a race truck, uh, it's added around 200 kilos to the total weight of the truck. So to rebalance the ride heights to get the, the shocks in the right position so um, was, was quite critical to us. So not only do they have live valve, which is obviously some level of active damping, um, they also have position sensitive damping. So it's really important for a Raptor uh, road going or otherwise to maintain the ride height so that the position sensitive part of the damper can, can operate correctly. So we've done our best to retain that um, while yeah, obviously needing to adjust the, the ride height with standard spring rates that we, we use on the road. So probably one interesting thing about, well, interesting, one thing about Baja, it's a, um, it's a thousand miles roughly, runs for 25, 26, 27 hours in, in this type of truck. So um, the guys can be in really remote areas. So you've got to be essentially able to do your own spares changes and, and carry some level of spare parts on board. Um, what we didn't see in the back, we had a, drive, a whole drive shaft mounted to the rear, rear cage uh, in here. So through the board there, you've got some steering arms. Um, we've got tools. Um, we have spare air filter, spare drive belt, spare alternator belts. We had spare alternator, spare starter. Um, just all the things that you could change, um, I guess, with fairly little effort if you really had to do it to keep the truck running. Also behind the driver there, you've got a helmet air system. So this truck also has air conditioning. So the guys can put the, the truck on recirc and, uh, and effectively run the aircon and, and keep the cabin at whatever temp they want. But you do get a lot of dust ingestion no matter what you do, no matter how well you seal it, particularly through the silt like I was talking about before. So they do have the option of running visor down and helmet air so that it just gives them a little bit more movement past their face. So On the left hand side of the truck we've got the nav seat. So for, again for Baja and, and Fink we have a, a GPS navigation system so we're using a, a Garmin system here. We use Lowrance in, in Baja. Um, effectively the nav has all the course notes that the guys have compiled over the last few days of pre-running um, with I guess the track map and, and just various waypoints or, or dangers or features that they want to map and, and mark depending on the driver and nav preference. So that's right up front, dri um, driver can touch it. Off to the left, we have um, a rally safe unit, which is compulsory to run for all competitors. So um, it gives proximity of following vehicles, leading vehicles. It gives you like an overtake option. Uh, it's effectively a, a mobile stewarding system for the race uh, and yeah, so the nav needs to operate that when we're either being passed or passing. And, uh, and yeah, it's, it's just a heads up display for them to, to enable to be aware of what's around them. So in Baja, we run a, a different, slightly different system, but similar concept called a Stella. Uh, and it's always on, it's emergency beacon as well. So um, yeah, it's a pretty integral piece of the truck from a, I guess a competition and a safety standpoint. Um, so yeah, the other feature of the truck that we've changed from standard is the method uh, wheel and the 3 out 5 tyre. So we're still running a BFG KO2, just a slightly larger outside diameter, effectively to give us better ground clearance. Uh, the truck performs just as well on a 33 in terms of outright pace uh, and 
you know, we've proven that. We've been pre-running a truck. It's a standard Raptor on 35s and 33s, and, and they're just as quick as one another. Um, this just enables you to, to get over or clear features. So probably less important for Fink, which is a bit sandy, but when we go to Baja, you've got really big boulders, rocks, drops. You've got a huge array of terrain you've got to deal with. So having ground clearance is really key there. So you can afford to trade off, um, I guess, outright steering performance and you know maybe have a slight bit more body roll so the bf goodrich tires mounted to a method b grip wheel they're lighter than our standard wheel and, and offer just that i guess beadlock type protection without a beadlock so that was pretty important to us from a i guess not only retaining the look of the truck but but obviously just that tire retention was uh, was pretty key as well So minus the snorkel we spoke about before being non-standard, um, the powertrain itself is completely standard. So what you can buy off the showroom floor from your Ranger Raptor or in your Ranger Raptor, it's exactly the same three liter V6. So we make the same power and torque, um, same transmission, same transmission cal, um, transfer case, everything. So in terms of, you know, testing, I guess, testing what we develop in proving grounds like Fink, um, it's exactly what you can buy off the show before. So.